friends, I'm Jennifer Arruda with ReverseAutoimmune.com. Today's presentation is going to be a health lecture on the topic of autoimmune diseases. I'm going to give you an autoimmune overview. I'm going to also give you the five-step protocol that my husband and I used to put his autoimmune disease in remission. You're going to learn how to put yours in remission and live symptom-free, Lord willing. Before we begin, let's have a word of prayer, shall we? Our Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for caring about our health. Thank you for caring about our spiritual health too. And Lord, I just ask that you please give us wisdom and guidance as we consider this topic of autoimmune diseases. I pray for those who are suffering from an autoimmune disease that you would please be near to them during this suffering and struggling. I pray that you would heal them, that you would, that you would have their that you would have your hand over their life. I pray that you would please be with us as we discuss this in Jesus' name, amen. So, autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune disease is a major health problem right now. The American Autoimmune Related Disease Association estimates that 50 million Americans, even some estimates say up to 80 million Americans, are affected by autoimmune diseases. This is more than heart disease and cancer combined. This is a staggering statistic if you consider that heart disease and cancer are America's number one and number two killers. It is estimated that one in six Americans have an autoimmune disease. The number of people with an autoimmune disease is increasing at a dramatic rate. There are new diseases appearing that doctors are calling autoimmune, but they don't know what it really is. Despite these high numbers, autoimmune diseases remain among the most poorly understood and poorly identified category of illness. In fact, they are so difficult to diagnose, over 45% of patients with autoimmune diseases were labeled chronic complainers in the earlier stages of their illness. It can take about five years to receive an official autoimmune diagnosis. The average person goes to six to 10 doctors before autoimmunity is recognized as the culprit. And the symptoms, they can affect all of the body's organs. Well, what are some of those symptoms? Well, the list seems endless, there, but you can have anything such as headaches, anxiety, brain fog, attention deficit problems, body rashes, red flaking skin, rosacea, red bumps on the face, eczema or dermatitis, psoriasis, which is dry, itchy, scaly skin, food allergies or sensitivities, asthma, thyroid issues, fatigue, exhaustion, stiffness and joint pain, stomach cramping, gas, bloated stomach, diarrhea, constipation, and the list goes on. I pretty much covered about anything you could have, right? In this list, you noticed food allergies and sensitivities. That is one of the biggest indicators, especially if you have numerous food allergies, things that you probably really shouldn't be allergic to. That's a big indicator that you may very well have an autoimmune disease. Well, what is autoimmune disease? Well, it's a name to classify 80 to 100 different diseases which occur from the immune system attacking the body's own organs, tissues, and cells. There's a confusion problem happening in the immune system. Some common autoimmune diseases are Graves' disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, both of those affect the thyroid, one is hyperthyroidism, one is hypothyroidism, lupus, type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease, multiple sclerosis, ALS, rheumatoid arthritis, celiac disease, Crohn's disease, chronic fatigue syndrome, psoriasis, vitiligo, restless leg syndrome, and the list goes on. There's 80 to 100 different ones. Have you heard any of these? Do you know someone who has one of these autoimmune diseases? My husband, my husband Gabriel, his grandmother died from autoimmune liver cirrhosis. His mom just passed away a few years ago too from the same thing back in 2013. 
And we know that my husband Gabriel has the same thing also. But thankfully, God has led us to the information that has put his autoimmune completely in remission. We are so thankful for that. And this is what I'm going to share with you, is a five-step protocol that we used to put his autoimmune disease in remission. So the normal prescribed treatments for autoimmune diseases usually include anti-inflammatory drugs, including powerful and dangerous steroids and immune suppressing drugs. The problem is, is that these drugs have serious side effects and only the symptoms are being addressed. Therefore, you are not healing. But true healing searches for the cause. It asks why, not just what. Why has this happened? What is causing it? Trying to treat autoimmune diseases with medication is like taking the battery out of the smoke detector and watching your house burn down. Not a very good picture. So what causes autoimmune diseases? Well, in a short, brief word, toxins, toxicity. How does this cause an autoimmune reaction in the body though? Well, let's start with ha what happens in the gut, the small intestine. Most everyone with an autoimmune disease probably has leaky gut. What is leaky gut? Well, your small intestine is lined with these finger-like projections called villi. The villi is what absorbs the nutrients from the food that you eat into your blood to be used all throughout your body. Specific nutrients are allowed to pass through, but toxins and large undigested food particles are blocked. However, toxins and or stress can damage the lining of the small intestine, causing inflammation. And when you have that inflammation, it makes the small intestine permeable with holes, and that is leaky gut. These holes in the small intestine allow large particles of undigested food, bad bacteria, and toxic waste to leak out into the bloodstream. This is leaky gut. You may also be exposed to toxins through other avenues, such as through your skin or through the air, breathing them in. Your immune system is your defense against foreign invaders. It is an internal army that has to distinguish between friend and foe in your body. Now autoimmunity occurs when your immune system recognizes these foreign invaders in your body and attacks. Unfortunately, your tissues, your body's own tissues and organs can get caught in the friendly crossfire. This is why you can experience inflammation throughout various parts in your body when you have things passing through your small intestine, which shouldn't be. They're going throughout your body, your immune system is identifying them as that they shouldn't be there and it goes to attack and you can get autoimmune then. Something else that can occur is called molecular mimicry. Molecular mimicry is when you have certain foods and toxins that have a similar amino acid se sequence to amino acids in your body and these can be in your various organs too. And so you have a certain food protein or you have even a virus that has an amino acid sequence and it is similar to something in your body and so your body can get confused and then attack what it thinks is actually a foreign invader. So there's a problem there in the identification uh, process in your body and there's confusion in identifying a friend from a foe in your body. And this leads to an autoimmune condition. Now with leaky gut, since your small intestine lining is damaged, there are a lot of complications that come along with that. One of the big things being you have malabsorption of nutrients. And you can imagine what this can cause if you're not being nutrified because you're not able to absorb the nutrients from your food. So let me review that in a short, succinct way. So you've got toxins coming into your body, mostly through your digestive tract. It creates inflammation in the small intestine as your body attacks. 
and then that creates intestinal permeability with the holes between the villi and that is what is known as leaky gut. And then you have foreign particles going throughout the bloodstream and they end up lodged in various organs. Your body goes on the attack and some of your body's tissues get, ca get caught in the friendly crossfire and that is an autoimmune disease. That is the basic sum of what happens. Now I want to tell you the five-step plan that my husband and I used to reverse or put his autoimmune disease in remission. So let's go more into detail on these five steps. So step number one, removing the damaging foods and toxins. So at the top of the list of damaging foods, I would put gluten. So you want to eliminate wheat and gluten from your diet. This is the number one way to, to cure your leaky gut and autoimmune disease. Gluten is the protein in wheat and other various grains. Now, bread has been the staple of life for 6,000 years, but now so many people are having a problem with it. What's going on? You probably know at least one person who is gluten intolerant or sensitive to gluten. Why? Well, wheat has been hybridized exponentially over the past 50 years. Our modern wheat in the USA has a much higher gluten content than the original strains, making it very hard to digest. Also, they've hybridized it with methods called mutational breeding, mutagenesis, where they take the entire genetic code of the plant and they expose it to radiation not even knowing what they're going to get in the DNA. They also use chemicals to refine the traits that they end up seeing that they like to make the bread higher gluten content, better rise, etc., etc. So this hybridization that's being done with radiation has caused a huge issue with the body being able to recognize it as a friend or a foe. It's not the natural wheat that we started with, and so the body attacks when it sees it. What's interesting is our friend's wife was gluten intolerant. She couldn't eat bread without being very bloated, being in a lot of pain. Well, they went to Europe and she was able to eat bread over there, no problem. Now this might seem tough to eliminate gluten, bread made with wheat. It might seem overwhelming and like a big change compared to what you're used to but it's very important if you do have an autoimmune disease. I would recommend eliminating it completely and very strictly until you're completely better. And then you can reintroduce the wheat or gluten, but make sure it is organic, sprouted, ancient grain. You can experiment with varieties such as spelt, kamut, einkorn, farro, emmer something that hasn't been hybridized with the radiation. See how you do on that. Some people who are not having big health problems, some people who are not having autoimmune diseases, sometimes experiment with this just to see if they do notice anything in their health improve. And so they will eliminate it for say 90 days completely and then add it back in and see if they have some kind of reaction. This happened to a friend of ours she would get migraine headaches and she got off of it for about three weeks off of the gluten and when she got back on it she got a migraine headache and she was able to make the connection between the gluten and her headaches and so now she's gluten free. What else could be a damaging food and toxin? Well the number two thing I would put is GMOs. GMOs, what does GMO stand for? GMO stands for genetically modified organisms, GMO. These are certain plants that have their DNA altered to be able to withstand deadly doses of herbicides and to, protect, and to produce their own pesticides. For example, the company Monsanto used the hepatitis virus to infect corn cells with DNA that makes the corn produce its own pesticide. And when the bug eats this corn, its stomach explodes. So you wonder if that could cause any problem with our digestion. 
The very plant is toxic in this condition. GMO crops are just drenched with heavy chemicals, specifically Roundup, which kills everything around it except for that certain plant which has been genetically modified. Roundup is extremely toxic. It contains something called glyphosate, which is one of the deadly ingredients in Agent Orange, which was used in chemical warfare in Vietnam. Not something you'd want to eat, right? Animal studies are indicating serious health risks associated with genetically modified food, including immune problems, accelerated aging, allergies, new diseases, abnormal changes in major organs, and the GI system, the gastrointestinal tract. Also, infertility. Mice that are fed GM pesticide producing corn over four generations showed abnormal structural and chemical changes to major organs and the gastrointestinal system and they had significantly reduced fertility. The stomach lining of rats fed GM potatoes showed excessive cell growth leading to cancer. Another study was do done where more than half of the babies of mothers fed genetically modified soy died within three weeks. Most genetically modified soy fed hamsters lost the ability to have babies by the third generation. Thousands of sheep, buffalo and goats in India died after grazing on genetically modified cotton plants. And then eyewitness reports from all over North America describe how numerous kinds of animals, including cows, pigs, geese, elk, deer, squirrels, and rats, when given a choice, avoid eating genetically modified foods. Sometimes the animals can be smarter than us, can't they? <laughs> no human studies have been done with genetically modified foods. I believe we are the study and I think this autoimmune crisis is the result. I would highly recommend a documentary entitled Genetic Roulette. It's all about GMOs. You can watch it online for free. And it really goes into detail about genetically modified foods and products. And it will give you more details on GMOs. Most livestock and poultry in the United States are fed with GMO soy, GMO corn, and GMO alfalfa. So some people who eat meat, they go for something called grass-fed beef. Have you heard of that? Well, that might be better than corn-fed beef, maybe, but the grass that they're being fed is most likely GMO alfalfa. So you really got to watch out. The GMOs that we have right now, they're, they're coming out with more as time goes on, but right now, certain select foods are GMO. So you've got GMO fed meat and dairy, GMO soy, about 90%, over 90% of the soy in the United States is genetically modified, GMO corn, GMO canola, sugar that comes from sugar beets, also the papaya, I mean the small Hawaiian papayas, not the big Mexican ones, but the small Hawaiian ones. Also zucchini and yellow summer squash. Recently they've added a few more. Uh, there's a GM apple now and a GM potato. So when you go to eat something with any of these items in it, make sure that the package has one of either two labels on it, either USDA organic or non-GMO project verified. If it has one of these two labels, it means it cannot be genetically modified. Of course, if you could always get the organic, that would be better because it's not going to have any pesticides on it either. But either of these labels would mean it's non-GMO. This is really important. And something to consider is when you go out to eat, think about the oils that they're using. You might call ahead and ask what kind of oil they're using. It's probably going to be a vegetable oil, which means a combination of soy, corn, canola, or it's going to be corn oil, or it's usually one of these oils because they're cheap in bulk and so restaurants buy them. So it's important that we look out for these things and start eating things without these oils in them, without these genetically modified ingredients. You've got to become a food detective and really start reading your labels 
This is just the times that we're living in, unfortunately. What else would be damaging food and toxin? Okay, the next one is what I think is a no-brainer, but you never know, we should, we should still mention it, is to stop smoking and drinking alcohol. You don't want to be adding things to your body that is hurting your body, and most certainly smoking, drinking alcohol is at the top of the list there. There's no safe amount of alcohol. Also, you can talk to your doctor about re reducing your medications. Medications have a significant impact on your body's ability to be able to heal. They're burdening your body down with toxicity. There's even a specific kind of lupus that is drug-induced lupus. And so medications are huge causers of toxicity in the body. Also, you want to replace your personal care products and your cleaning products that have synthetic chemicals in them to ones that have natural products. And there's a lot of choices now. It's nice that this information is coming into the public light because now we have other options. It's just a matter of you making those choices to get rid of the toxic chemicals in your household and replacing them with ones that are not toxic to the body. Okay, that was step number one. Step number two is heal your leaky gut. So if you have the damage there, you want to stop doing what's causing that damage and then you want to try to heal it. And there are things you can do to heal it. One of the best things that I like is this healing broth. It's a, it's a really nice anti-inflammatory soup. It's one potato cut in large pieces, one onion cut in large pieces, several pieces of orange peel that are about two to three inches long, and that would be organic orange peel since you're using the peel. One inch of ginger minced, one inch of turmeric minced. If you can't find fresh turmeric, you can always use one teaspoon of the ground powdered turmeric. And then one teaspoon of Himalayan mineral salt or other full mineral unrefined salt. You just pour enough water to cover all of your contents there and then bring it to a boil. Boil it for about 20 minutes until the potatoes and onions are soft. And then you can just eat that soup. I like to put a little spoonful of coconut milk in it. It tastes excellent. I love it. And if you have a really serious condition, you may just drink the broth as the last thing you have before you go to bed. You may consider doing a two to three day broth only fast to give your small intestine a chance to really recover. One of the reasons that this soup is so powerful is because onions are one of the highest sources of something called quercetin. That is incredibly healing to the small intestine. It pretty much seals the gut and makes it impermeable again. It also acts as an antihistamine. Orange peel, the ginger, the turmeric, those are all very anti-inflammatory, so much so that they take away pain all over the body. So if you have some pain due to inflammation, which could include from an injury, joint pain, then this would be a very nice broth or soup for you to eat. Also, there are several other things you can do. One is aloe vera. You just take one inch from the inside of the leaf, you scrape it and eat it about 20 minutes before each meal. Also cabbage and beets, spinach, parsley, they're very high in something called L-glutamine, which is very healing for the small intestine. Also, you could do licorice root tea. This herb is especially beneficial for your leaky gut if it's being caused by stress because it balances your cortisol levels. Also, all coconut products are especially good for your gut. The fats in coconut are easier to digest than other fats, so it works well for leaky gut because remember, with leaky gut, you're having a big problem with digestion. It's very limited. So that was the second step, is healing your leaky gut. The third step is nutrify. So how do you get a lot of nutrients? One way is with fresh green juices. You get a juicer and you put some fresh vegetables through and you can do a mix. You're going to get high quantities of vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, and you're getting them in the original packaging. And you don't want to do this when you're eating because 
you're separating the fiber and you're wanting it to go through and get into your blood as soon as possible and so eliminating that fiber there when you're trying to get those nutrients will let it get into your blood really quickly so keep it apart from your meals also you could be doing green smoothies where you blend up lots of good greens celery kale you can put avocado in there lime make it taste really good also you should be eating many raw fruits and vegetables you really need high vitamin mineral content at this time and getting it in their fresh raw state is ideal. Also, you can be taking ground flaxseed, which is great for omega-3s. And then there's probiotics. Now probiotics, you don't know exactly what you're going to be getting if you're buying them in a supplement. Uh, you could try, but the best way to get it is from uh, greens that you could grow yourself and that you don't wash. You want that bacteria, that good bacteria on the plants. Uh, you might look at doing some wild edibles. Having your own garden is the best way though to grow which greens that you would like. Also cabbage, raw cabbage is one of the best sources of probiotics. And then also unheated honey. Now it can say raw, but it can still be heated to 120. That, that's still good, but it's not going to have the probiotics. So if you want the probiotics, you want to make sure and find honey that's unheated, which you might find locally if you know a beekeeper in the area, or you might find it online. So that was the third step, nutrify. The fourth step is to cleanse. So you've been having toxins leaking out through your small intestine, going throughout your whole body. Now that you've sealed your leaky gut and stopped that leakage, you still have toxins floating throughout your body, stored in tissues, especially the fat tissue is stored in different organs. So you wanna to try to help your body release those and get rid of them. So in cleansing or detoxing, you're going to be getting rid of toxins that have accumulated in the tissues and organs from years of chronic exposure. One good way to start with that is to limit your heavy metal exposure, which includes getting rid of those silver fillings in your mouth using a DAMS certified dentist that's mercury safe. Mercury is highly toxic and it should never be in our mouth. I know the claim has been for years that when it's in your mouth, it's in a stable form. The studies are showing that's just not true. It leaks out every time you rub on the tooth, which would include every time you eat. And so you wanna get those fillings out and then you want to start taking activated charcoal to get rid of those heavy metals that have stored throughout your body. Maybe it's not just from your mercury fillings. You might have heavy metals in your body from various contaminated water sources, maybe from various years you were eating fish. There are a lot of sources of heavy metal exposure and other toxins you have in your body. Activated charcoal will take care of many chemicals and toxins that are in your body. So, you can start doing one tablespoon of activated charcoal in one cup of water, just mix it up and drink it down. You could do that once a day. And just keep in mind, activated charcoal is different than charcoal briquettes. It's very different, so make sure you're getting activated charcoal. You can also use charcoal in poultices externally on your liver. You can just make a paste with water and the charcoal and you can add some ground flaxseed or ground chia or psyllium just to keep it together so it doesn't dry out on your skin. So you make a paste, put it on a paper towel and stick it on your liver, which is on your right side below your rib cage and cover it with a piece of uh, Glad press and seal. It's, it's very sticky, like almost like a tape, very easy to stick on there. And then just let it go overnight or maybe for a couple hours and it will draw the blood to the liver and help the liver detox and it will draw toxins out of the liver. You could also do that to your kidneys if you have low back pain and it's because of your kidneys. I've had this when I've had food poisoning. You can put poultices on your kidneys. My husband did this for me when I had food poisoning and it made my kidneys, my lower back, feel better within half an hour. And so activated charcoal is very powerful in detoxing. What else can you do? You can also do some fasting so consider doing a fasting cleanse. You can do it at home. You can do several days, two, three, four, 
five days of juice fasting where you're just doing fresh raw vegetable juices or you can invest in going to a 10-day all-inclusive program there are great cleansing programs out there and it's helpful to have someone hand you a juice instead of having to do it yourself something simple that's very powerful too is just doing a one or two day all water fast where you're not having any kind of carbohydrate or protein coming into your body because even when you're doing the juicing you're still digesting uh, the macronutrients such as the sugars and the proteins. So these are some very, very powerful things. When you do fasting over the course of 24 hours and then 48 hours, your body starts its cell recycling program where it starts going to all the different cells that are damaged and it starts killing them and taking what it can recycle and recycle it and use it getting rid of what they can't use. And so this will help detox you on a cellular level, which is what you really need and want. Also, there are saunas. Far infrared saunas specifically are very detoxing because those far infrared rays are penetrating deep into the tissue and it, that can also help detox you on a cellular level. So there are a lot of things you can do to help cleanse and detox your body. The fifth step that is part of the five-step protocol to reverse autoimmune diseases is removing your stress, especially that chronic stress that, keep, that seems to keep hitting you over and over and over. So what can you do to remove your stress, or at least to deal with it better, right? Well, one of the best things is to get at least eight to 10 hours of early sleep, being in bed by 8 p.m. Now, I would say for the average person, 9 p.m. is probably a very good bedtime to get that early sleep before midnight. That's worth two hours of after midnight sleep. But people who have an autoimmune disease need way more sleep. Your body is healing when you sleep. And so you need to give it the opportunity to heal. So you really need more sleep. I would encourage you 8 o'clock, be in bed, sleeping shortly after that. Also, you can take naps as you need to. Your body needs that time to repair itself. And the liver is active during the night, so you wanna give it nice long time to process all the toxins in your body. Also, something you can do to deal with your stress better is to exercise. Do you ever notice how great you feel after you're done exercising? It's because your body is releasing those feel-good hormones, the chemicals, endorphins, and you're also sweating, so you're excreting toxins through your skin. So this is a nice way to get rid of those cortisol levels in your body, to replace them with good feeling hormones. And it just seems to dissolve your stress when you get out and exercise. It gives you a better mood. You feel way, way better when you can get an exercise. Sweating, losing your muscles. What else can you do to help relieve stress? Hot baths, especially with Epsom salt. The Epsom salt has magnesium in it and the magnesium is very calming. What else can you do? Well, I would say some of these next things I'm gonna share are some of the most important. Read encouraging promises in the Bible and believe them. This is so important because as we're going through something hard, we need God's presence with us. We need to remember his promises of his loving care towards us. So read those promises and believe them. Also, it's so helpful to be grateful. So thank God every day for his care and his blessings in your life. Thank him for being there with you through your trials. Also trust in God and his will and his love for you. Trust him that even though you're going through a hard time, he's with you, he loves you still, and he wants something better for you than you want for yourself. He's going to bring something good out of this horrible difficulty that you're going through. That's what happened with my husband, Gabe, and I when we went through his challenges with his autoimmune disease. God brought something better out of it that we very much value, which is growth in our characters, closeness with him, now being able to share encouraging health and spiritual information with people who are also suffering, there are a lot of benefits that can come out of a difficult time if you just let God work in your life. 
And then lastly, and this one is so important, is forgive. You've got to be able to forgive if you're going to get rid of that chronic stress in your life. Not being able to forgive can in itself kill you from that bitterness that's just eating away at your heart. And so Jesus is the only one who has the power to help you forgive. And so I encourage you to go to him and tell him you want to forgive those various people that have hurt you in your life and ask him for the power to do that. He will answer that prayer and he will give you peace in place of that hurt, anger, and bitterness. So in brief, that was the five-step plan that my husband and I used to help reverse his autoimmune disease. Number one, remove damaging foods and toxins. Number two, heal the leaky gut. Number three, nutrify. Number four, cleanse, detox. And number five, remove stress. I want to end with a Bible verse. Psalms 103, verses 2 and 3. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. It is God who heals. It is God who gives life. It is God who gives us abundant health that we want. Remember that when you confess your sins to God and you surrender your life to Jesus, your life is in his hands. And you can have peace knowing that someone who is all-powerful and loves you more than his own life is in control of your life. He can heal you. And in the meantime, he is growing your faith and your character. So, would you like to put your health in the hands of the great physician? Amen. Me too. Well, let's tell the Lord that in prayer, shall we? Our Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for being the great physician who cares for us, who heals us, who loves us and is with us through all of our trials and all of our suffering. Thank you, Lord, for caring for every bit of pain and suffering that we go through. And thank you for holding us through it all. Lord, I pray that you would restore us all to health. I pray that you would heal us in our hearts and minds too. And I pray that you would bless and be with each and every person who has an autoimmune disease who is hearing this. I pray that you'd comfort them, give them hope, encouragement, and lead and guide their minds as they seek to receive healing and to try these natural methods of healing for their recovery. I thank you, Lord, for being our great and mighty God and great physician. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.